So here we've got our Transformer 6VF. 6 stands for 6 meters working width. VF stands for variable frame. Variable frame means that this machine is able to cover row spacings from 25 centimeters up to 80 centimeters. We've hitched the machine to a 150 HP tractor, no front ballast. That's a fairly streamlined combination. Let's start at the rear of the machine. Back here we've got the sliding frame. That's how it looks like. The machine frame is fully integrated with the machine. Two advantages to that. The weight of the machine is close to the tractor. That means we're not going to need a large tractor and just a small frontal ballast or none at all. The second advantage, when we're turning or driving on slopes, we've got significantly improved safety. We have a sliding distance of 450 millimeters. Andreas is moving it now. Of course, the sliding frame is designed for the working width. So we've chosen the material thickness for the 6-meter machine in order to fit the 6-meter machine. And we're customizing it for the 12 and 9-meter machines. Below the sliding frame, we've got the disc coulters. We've sized them very large on purpose in order for them to anchor the machine. The class camera system is giving us very precise signals. We need those precise signals in order to be able to properly work, for example, in 25 centimeters of grain without damaging the crop. So our disc coulter acts like an anchor for the machine, so we can transmit these precise movements to the frame. If we look at the concept of the frame, we've designed the frame for the working width. So with a working width of 6 meters, we're going to use a smaller profile. For 9 and 12 meters, we're using a larger profile. That enables us to always strike a perfect balance between stability and working weight of the machine. Here, with a 25 cm row spacing, we've got a working weight of only 1,800 kg. That's pretty impressive, I'd say. We've got our clamping profile at the frame here. That's designed so we have it on the inside here. So the unit is clamped in from the inside. The advantage here is that we get to move everything within the clamping rail, freely move it, that's why we call it variable frame. So we can cover row spacings from 25 centimeters, like here, all the way up to 80 centimeters. Our goal is to be able to cover all sorts of crops with a single machine. Next in our system, we've got our units. We've got very broad mountings for our units, that's on purpose. All right, Michael, you're demonstrating it already. We've got these broad mountings to give us good durability as well as high precision. Especially here with 25 cm row spacings and the 18 cm points we've got mounted, we only have a distance of 3 cm to the plants on both sides. So that is going to need good precision so we can avoid destroying the crop row. There are two springs integrated into the unit. The springs are giving us good surface pressure. So that means our points will reliably insert even under dry conditions and with very hard rocky soil. This hydraulic cylinder is supplying our row lift system. Row lift system. That's what we're calling the section control we've got here at this hoe. We can control this manually or have it under automatic control via a GPS signal we're receiving. We're going to look at this in action in a second. So if we take another look at the unit, here we've got the maintenance-free couplings. Those are milled from carbide and originally from our Maestro series. So here we're just taking parts from our company's toolbox. We're taking proven systems and integrating them into our existing models. Over here at the unit, we've got the depth adjuster. Michael, if you'd like to operate this, I'll explain the principle. Right, we've got a depth adjuster with 0.5 cm increments. That's moving our depth guide wheel here at the machine. 
If we adjust the setting one step up, the height of the depth guide wheel changes by 0.5 cm so we can have a very precise optimal height guidance for the point. Why do we need this kind of precise guidance? The general principle is that we're looking to go as deep as necessary but as shallow as possible, so we can cleanly cut weeds and anything we don't want in our culture without going too deep. So, if we take another look at the unit, we've got different installation spaces here, enabling a number of different row spacings. Later, we're going to take a closer look at that with our Transformer 12. Right, Johannes. I bet our viewers are really looking forward to the demonstration. Let's just have the machine drive for a bit, and then we're going to take a look at the result in the field. Right. All right, Andreas. Let's drive. In order to demonstrate our row lift system, we've gone and built a model headland track. Just look at how gently the units are being withdrawn and inserted again, so we're damaging the crops as little as possible. All right, Johannes, if I want to judge the quality of work of a hoe, what do I need to look at? What are my criteria? In general, we need to look at how shallow or deep we're going to work. What we have here, all these smaller plants, we want to cut them all out and separate them from the soil. So we've achieved that. On the other hand, as you can see, our crops are still standing. If you take a look at the row, you see that all our crops, all plants are still standing. None of them have been buried. Here we could probably even go a bit faster. Well, that takes us nicely to the next question. How much are we going to get under these conditions? Under these conditions, I'd say we make about 5 km per hour here. I think we could probably go faster, as we've not buried anything at all. Under these conditions, I think we should be able to achieve at least 8 km per hour. So, based on the development stage, when would you be able to drive into the crops? The plants shouldn't be any smaller than 7 cm. Otherwise, we're going to bury the crops and damage the crops. Right on cue, crops. Let's take a look at the 12-meter transformer and talk a bit about the options we have when it comes to different row spacings. We've mounted angled points on the left side of this transformer and our standard points on the entire right side. Here we have a 50 cm spacing between the units as well. Same as with the 6 meter machine, you should be able to see driving in the background. We've mounted the blades at 50 cm as well. So we've got a row of crops in the middle and 50 cm spacing. Looking at the points, that's our standard edge on point. Here we've put the bolts in sideways, so the force from the upper spring is properly transferred to the point. And to make sure we've got a good grip on the soil, both on the sides as well as to the rear. We want to achieve a good horizon to work with and make sure we're keeping the proper depth. As I've mentioned at the beginning, as shallow as possible, as deep as necessary. Optionally, this point is available in a carbide version for longer tool life. It's also available in 150 mm width. Right, so walking to the other side of the machine, here's our angled points. We have those angled points for very small crops. You've already talked about this and asked when we're going to drive in there. Let's say we've got maize that's a bit smaller, in 50 or 75 rows. So our crop row would be where I've got my yardstick. All the points are making sure we're not burying the plants. The soil is moved away from the crop row into the middle between the plants. So our crops won't be buried, so we can drive in a bit earlier. Besides the angled blades, do we have any other ways to protect small crops? We can also work with protective screens or plates to protect the crops, so we can drive into the field even earlier, keep the crops clean even earlier, and can use a broader toolbox when it comes to the applications. Looking at the 12VF with 12 meters working width, what's the implications for that for transport? 
I think our viewers will be quite interested in hearing more about this. Right, that's a very interesting aspect, especially with these working widths. Zofia, please fold the machine right now. We get less than a 4 meter height and less than a 2.95 meter width for transport. That's the benefit of our inner clamping. We're able to fold the outer wings by 180 degrees and have them very snug against the inner wings. That gives us a very narrow transport width of less than 3 meters and a height of less than 4 meters. We'll see that when Sophia has finished folding the machine. Right, working widths. We've got 6 meters and 12 meters here. What else do we have planned? Between the 6 and 12 meter versions, we've also got a 9 meter version. So that closes the gap between those widths. So we've got 6, 9 and 12 meters. All right, dear viewers, now you've got the opportunity to ask Johannes questions about the hoeing technology from Hosch. Okay, Johannes, we did get quite a few questions from the chat regarding our hose. Let me just go ahead with the first question. Question about finger hose. What's our answer to that? In general, we'd be able to mount a finger hoe here. We're currently working on something where we're going to place finger hose behind the unit to work better in a row. Yesterday, we talked a bit about driving speeds. So, the question being, what would be a realistic top speed here? The top speed of the system would certainly be above 15 km per hour. Whether that makes any sense agriculturally is another question. So far, we've done 14 km per hour in maize, that's what we've tested regarding top speed. Well, our next question from the audience happens to be about maize as well. Placing nurse crops during the last hoeing pass. Can we do that? Or how would something like that look like? We're able to mount a distribution tower to the 6 meter, 9 meter or 12 meter machines that we can use to apply a nurse crop precisely onto the crop row or the spacing between rows. So we're able to apply nurse crops or fertilizer. And here's the last question I got. When it comes to pressurizing the hoe elements, what's our options here? We've got a dual spring package for every unit, so we can basically pressurize each unit individually and ensure safe feeding. 